So Adidas Boost technology has been around for five years now, and there's been a couple other brands that have sort of mimicked the technology of Adidas Boost, and I wanted to cover those top five copycats in this video. What is going on guys, Hess here from CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the links in the description. And as I mentioned, today's video, I'm gonna be covering the top five copycats of Adidas Boost technology. Now, if you don't know what Adidas Boost technology is, let me sum that up for you real quick. So Adidas Boost technology actually started in 2013 on the Energy Boost model. The fan favorite Ultra Boost came out a year later, but the midsole is definitely what draws a lot of attention to the shoe. It almost looks like a styrofoam or a spongy polystyrene, but it actually is made up of little nuggets of super springy thermoplastic polyurethane, which is also known as TPU. And the combination of those thousands of little pellets are really what give the boost technology the advantage over the competition because this really leads to a lot of extreme cushioning as well as energy return, which seems to be what the benchmark is for uh, running shoes and just comfort shoes in general. The winning combination for Adidas is because this shoe can bridge the gap between a lifestyle model, and also for performance such as running or basketball. Before we get into the top five, I do have a couple runner-ups. It should be noted that New Balance has a technology called Fresh Foam, which is supposed to be sort of like the responsive reactive cushion system from New Balance. And then also Brooks has a foam called DNA Amp, which is also created from BASF, the chemical company. The foundation of the DNA Amp is polyurethane foam. Brooks does something a little bit different and encases that foam in a thermoplastic polyurethane skin. I actually haven't tried the Brooks Levitate yet, but if any of you guys have, please leave a comment in the comment section and let us know how it is. All right, so starting off at the number five spot, probably the most controversial one on this countdown, but one that I thought would be worth mentioning, and that is the Nike React technology. Now I know that the Nike React technology doesn't really look like Ultra Boost, and it doesn't contain hundreds of little pellets that resemble what Ultra Boost uh, resembles but a lot of people say that this shoe draws a striking resemblance to the ultra boost I personally don't see that as much But the reason why I decided to include this into the countdown is because of what Nike is promoting this shoe as Which is the raw form of Nike react that is not encased Which is kind of different than what Nike usually does if you look at lunar line It's always been encased and then Nike react was encased in basketball this kind of takes the raw edge approach similar to what Adidas Boost does. Also because Nike is promoting this as a well-cushioned shoe as well as extremely responsive, which are the two main elements of what Boost is. So it kind of goes to show that like Nike had to play a little bit of catch up with comfort and technology, especially since Adidas Ultra Boost has been killing the game in the last two years. It seems like Nike had to step up to the plate and make something a little bit more comparable to what Adidas Boost has to offer to that same consumer market. So this could be considered uh, a running shoe, but it's also more like a lifestyle shoe as well because of the incredibly soft cushioning. I don't think this is gonna be a very durable shoe though. I've worn this a handful of times and it definitely shows sign of wear already, but expect a follow-up video on this channel very soon because I'll be in Disney World wearing these things to the ground every single day. So far, my initial impressions though and the comparison between Ultra Boost video has done really well. If you guys wanna check that video out, check the link in the description. But this one takes the number five spots for the reasons mentioned in this video. So the number four spot goes to Saucony Everrun technology, which at first glance, this looks like just a regular type of midsole. But if you look at the bottom, you could see that it definitely has some characteristics of Boost. I'm obviously a big fan of Saucony and a huge supporter of the brand. And I think that they took a step in the right direction by mimicking or creating something as similar to Boost as they could, because Boost does have that pinnacle spot of comfort right now. Saucony was really the first that brought it to the market in a successful way. And when I got this one, I was really, really shocked and surprised to see underneath the insole, it looks like just straight boost on the bottom of the shoe. Everrun is supposed to be three times more durable and three times less temperature sensitive than a standard EVA foam. They were definitely going for consistent responsiveness in the shoe and I can say that these deliver that. So these released in 2017, but recently Saucony actually is starting to venture out in the lifestyle realm with the shadow knit version uh, that has kind of a boost midsole. And I definitely want to try those out. Um, and uh, once again, this is the Everrun technology. So the number three spot goes to a technology from Puma called Puma Energy. Now there's actually a lot of history to the reasons why this looks so similar to boost. And that mainly is because Puma was actually the ones that originally started talking to BASF, the German chemical company that created boost back in 2009. But 2011, 
that company actually terminated their agreement and then took an exclusive agreement with Adidas. So they've had a lot of lawsuits between Puma and Adidas, so it is interesting to note that. Also, fun fact for you guys that didn't know, the original creators of Adidas and the original creators of Puma are actually brothers. So this rivalry goes back really, really far. So in 2014, Puma actually launched the Energy line, and these shoes sold for about $100 or so. These have a really hard ETPU, they call it, which is the expanded thermoplastic polyurethane, which is a little bit different than what um, Adidas has. But you can see on the insole, they kind of have the same sort of vibe with the Boost, but it's just not felt the same as with Adidas Boost. It's not as cushiony, um, and it might not be as responsive either because of it. So kind of a sad story, but regardless, this is the number three spot on the countdown. So moving on to the number two spot on the countdown, I know a lot of people are like, wait a minute, those are, those are Adidas Boost. And while it looks like this is an Adidas Boost, this is actually a replica of the Zebra Boost. And I did an unboxing of these already, if you guys missed that video. And I will have a video comparing these on feet if I haven't posted it on my channel already at the time of this video. But the reason why this is on the countdown is because this is replica Adidas Boost. It's not the same thing as the real deal. There is a difference between the two. And I wanted to call this out as one of the Adidas Boost ripoffs. These replicas nowadays are insane how close they are to the real thing. I mean, these look almost one for one to the authentic pair. But this is definitely something that is different between the authentic pair and the replica pairs. This Boost is just not merged the same. You can see that the little pellets are not the same as on a regular Adidas Boost. It's just kind of smoother and less segmented and separated as it is from the real thing. So you can see with real Adidas Boost, it just has a lot more brain-like look to it. This looks like they mimic that by putting it in a mold, but it definitely doesn't have like all of the individual pellets. Or if it does have the individual pellets, the way that the compound is put together, it does not merge together the same. It kind of all just goes together like marshmallows in a sense. So that is why I put these in at the number two spot of the countdown. So we made it to the number one spot on the countdown and if you guys are enjoying the video, please hit the thumbs up button and show your support on the video. It definitely goes a long way and it is much appreciated. So the number one spot of copycat or knockoff boost types goes to the king of knockoffs, Skechers. And this is the Skechers Burst model that I reviewed years ago. And this definitely should be the number one spot, in my opinion, of a knockoff boost. This is the epitome of what a knockoff is because they definitely took inspiration from the Adidas Boost technology and didn't execute it properly, but they really tried to mimic it the best that they could and then market it as something that was super amazing and awesome for their $60 price range that the Skechers Burst were. But these Skechers Burst also feature Skechers air-cooled memory foam on the bottom. And the upper looks like Nike Flyknit. I did a top five already on Skechers ripping off other shoe companies. It's just what they do, and they do it very successfully as much as us sneaker people look at this and go, that's obviously like inspiration from something else. The average person in America doesn't really understand that this was a ripoff of something else because they position themselves in the market to really be on feet of everyday consumers, not sneaker people really. So this is a successful product nonetheless. And I did a review on these years ago. They're actually quite comfortable to say the least. So as much as they look like a ripoff and as much as this material is really, really minimal, it really is comfortable. So it's funny that I could say that, but it is true. So the Burst Compound Midsole offers superior impact cushioning, protection, and remarkable energy return. Its soft, responsive compound burst allows maximum flexibility and is extremely lightweight. And that is something that is definitely true about these. These are really lightweight because of that. If I'm gonna be 100% honest, this burst actually kind of resembles this more than anything, this Nike React stuff. So watch out Nike with your Nike React. Skechers will probably come out with something very similar to this because it will be easy for them to do because this is a lightweight foam and this is a lightweight foam. Uh, just that Nike engineered this one a little bit better. We'll see if it's actually any more durable though, like I already mentioned. Anyways, that is the video. What do you guys think about my top five knockoffs of Adidas Boost? Did I miss any? Are there other brands out there that you think should have been in this countdown? Um, ultimately, it was just a fun countdown to come up with and hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you guys have suggestions for future top five videos, leave those comments in the comment section. And that's pretty much all we have for this video. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching. And if you guys wanna click the screen at this time, you can see other videos on my channel. And we will catch you guys for some more sneaker-related videos very soon. Peace, guys.